20 unlikely weapons in Minecraft. Minecraft is a sandbox game, meaning that just as many ways as there are to build and create, there are plenty of ways to damage and destroy. And that's why today we're talking about some of the strangest ways to fight your foes in the game. And hey, the YouTube princess bets me that you can't subscribe to the channel using just your nose. So to prove them wrong, smack your schnoz on that red sub button down below. It's free and it helps out a ton. Number one, anyone who's had the misfortune of stepping a bit too close to a bed in the nether knows that these suckers can pack quite the punch. And while that can be useful to kill dragons in the end, it's not as applicable for getting rid of your friends in the overworld. So if you're having trouble getting your enemies through the portal, there is still another avenue. Well, yes, bed explosions are pretty deadly, they aren't unmatched. As it goes, using an end crystal or respawn anchor in the overworld gives you an equal amount of force. And on hard mode, that's gonna be a lot of damage. But look, I won't lie, getting one of these set up isn't near nearly as easy or cheap as a bed, but late game, it might just be your perfect crime. Number two. Throughout history, Minecraft has had its fair share of cannons. Whether you're caving holes with a TNT launcher or creating a nuisance with a sand cannon, there are plenty of different ways to launch projectiles in the game. And as it turns out, the 1.17 update offers up an even newer addition to that category. As I'm sure you know, these dripstone blocks are not to be messed with, but better still is that we're able to launch these using slime blocks and pistons. Even with a small one like this, the momentum that we add in here could be just enough to make the option lethal. So while everyone else is worried about the differences between between stalactites and stalagmites, you'll know that their best application truly is as bullets. Number three, in case you didn't know, boats and endermen can make a great combo. After all, what better way to take down an enemy that teleports all the time than by having it not teleport at all? It's a no brainer if you ask me. But while these are clearly useful for trapping these foes, there's actually more that these ships can do. After setting yourself up with a two block tall ceiling, whether in the end or a warped forest, then all you need is just a couple of boats by your feet and the farm's ready. No joke, from there, anytime that you anger Enderman with a passing glance, you'll come close and get stuck in the bow. And folks, then the job is done. Number four, if you're not prepared, the Wither can be a tough opponent, especially on harder difficulties. I mean, at the very least, with 300 HP to its name, taking one down isn't usually a speedy experience. Or so you thought. As it turns out, while we've been wasting our time using swords, tridents, and axes to slay the boss, there's actually a much stranger option for victory. By crafting yourself a chunk of these fully powered firework rockets, then that's all that you need to beat the beast in roughly 10 seconds. Though I should know that for safety, it's probably best to spawn it under a bedrock fountain like such, but after you do that, then you can just simply hold down the right click button and get ready for the hard earned nether star. Number five, sometimes in Minecraft, it can be easy to forget that your actions have consequences. So to give your friend a quick refresher course, then how about we design a trap with that karma in mind? Now, I don't know about you, but on my world, exposed target blocks are a rare sight, meaning that as soon as someone sees one, you can guarantee that an arrow is going straight for the center. But this time, instead of a bullseye, they'll be treated to Newton's third law of motion. For every action, there's an equal and opposite reaction. And in this case, that reaction is a poison arrow headed straight for their torso. Is it cruel? Well, it's hard to say they didn't ask for it. And <laughs> maybe now they'll think twice before they act. Number six, when you're designing a trap, nothing ruins the fun quite like an MLG water bucket save. These things are like a deus ex machina. They remove all of the tension from the scene and they get really boring when they're overused. So to prevent someone's water bucket from raining on your parade, then why not find some way to soak up the source? And no, I'm not talking about sponges, but rather Rather, something a little bit more inconspicuous. You see, by having a half slab flipped like such, it looks just like any other block. But to their surprise, whenever they try to MLG, the water goes right to the bottom and they'll just hit the floor like regular. So really, if you want to catch a pro, this is the way to go. Number seven, planting trees around your base can really bring a build together, especially if you design some of them custom. That is, until your friend comes by and decides to break the bottom two logs of the tree trunk for a craft. And now all you got is a bunch of eyesores. Well, to solve that problem, let's teach them a one-time lesson that the Lorax would even approve of. By setting up an observer system like such, we can have it so that when they break the log, the chop gets recognized and then an explosion takes care of the rest. And better yet, by using TNT minecarts in this way, the detonation gets to near instantaneous levels. So whichever log they take from you, we can make sure it'll be their last. Number eight. Honey blocks are clearly a useful tool. Whether you want to keep your villagers in place, mobs out of your base, or a flying machine through space, these do the trick just fine. But their sticky qualities can just as easily be turned to the dark side. You see, with the advent of lava cauldrons in 1.17, we can pair these two concepts together and make a particularly sinister trap. Since honey blocks make jumping so difficult, when we throw one of these under a lava cauldron, suddenly the player's no longer able to escape. And with that, the seemingly harmless block becomes one that you gotta look out for. So if you're trying to feel like a Bond villain, then this might just be your next interrogation technique. Number nine. 
Although snow golems try their best, they don't exactly make for the best defense. I mean, unless they're fighting a blaze, these fellas don't even do damage, just knockback. And that's not exactly cutting it for our purposes. So to make these frosty friends a bit more ferocious, we need to crank up the heat. And for that, I'm actually being serious. In Bedrock Edition, if you put fire in front of their projectiles, then we straight up mix the fire and the ice, get something they gotta fear. And from there, all you gotta worry about is keeping the things safe. But as long as you use something like honey blocks to keep baby zombies from jumping in, then these should keep your villagers safe and secure, all while breaking the laws of physics as well. Number 10, llamas are a surprisingly ferocious mob in Minecraft. And after recently finding out that they're the only mob that can damage you in peaceful mode, I've wanted to stay on their good side. But while they might hold up as adversaries, I'd much rather make these things into allies. So to do just that, why not tuck one of these into the back of a boat and reap some new rewards? For one, not only does this give us a battleship of sorts, giving us ranged artillery on any attackers, but we also get some mobile storage with their chest space. And from where I'm standing, that's all upsides, folks. So if you're looking to claim the high seas, then I think you could benefit from the sailing companion. Number 11. Look, I'm sure many of us are curious creatures. It's just human nature, which means that if someone sees a chest out and about, they're gonna wanna open it. And if that's the case, then this might just open up the door for our perfect punishment. Now to pull this off, we'll need our chest, some signs, and a TNT to top it off. Since TNT is essentially a redstone activated gravity block, all we need is an input from a trapped chest, and that'll put this all in motion. They pop it open, the signs break around them, and all of a sudden that sandy floor leads them straight to their doom. And hey, why not even throw in a sign to cover up the trap chest front? That way, it's even less detectable and even more deadly. Number 12. Bad traps stick out like a sore thumb. Which is why, if you see a random pressure plate out in the open, most of us know not to step on it. But that's the whole point of this. You see, we want our victim to expect that it's trapped, break the pressure plate, and then the real trap goes in motion. The item is then sucked up by the hopper minecart, goes into a real hopper, and then a comparator sets off a signal, and the rest is history. Now, while you could be more cruel here by adding in more TNT minecarts, I think this actually could work really well in a rigged desert temple. That, folks, would be a surprise for sure, and one that's likely to leave them with no items to their name. Number 13. Scene. Bubble elevators are a great tool to have in your world, because if you're looking for speed from one point to another, you'd be hard pressed to find a better option than this, which makes them a staple in plenty of players' builds. And that's where this idea comes in. As you'll notice, ender pearls aren't the only thing that these things can keep in stasis. Other projectiles such as arrows work as well. So if you fire a bunch of instant damage arrows along the top and then keep that chunk loaded, then as soon as they come up to the top, they'll be met with quite the rude awakening, which takes their elevator to the top floor and turns it right into a stairway to heaven. Number 14. Entity cramming is an often forgotten rule of Minecraft. For those who don't know, the idea is that if you get more than a set amount of mobs in a one by one spot, then the game is going to apply steady damage until that number drops below the threshold. But unless you're doing some insane breeding on your cows and sheep, most of us don't even brush up against this. Though it could be surprisingly useful, particularly through minecarts. In this example, we've got a whole bunch of hopper minecarts that can fully squish the nether star out of a wither. I'm being serious, even one of the biggest bosses of the game could get hopelessly crushed by the limitation, proving that sometimes the greatest weapon is just some well-kept guidelines. Number 15. Few things in Minecraft are truly unbreakable. I mean, even bedrock can be broken in some form, and that's the unbreakable block. But while we might stand a chance of breaking blocks when we stand on steady ground, it's a different story when they're on the move. Through the help of flying machines, it's possible to make a proper working flying cage trap to take your enemies right up to build limit. But what we really should mention here is that by using blocks such as honeycomb that can't be easily mined, they'll be in for a bad time. As you can see, as the blocks keep moving, the break time keeps resetting. So if your foe doesn't have the proper kit to break it down, they'll be stuck on the one-way journey with no hope in sight. Number 16. Most of us know by now that axes can pack a lot more damage than a sword, but what they have in attack power, they don't exactly make up for an attack speed. Sure, if you get hit off successfully, it's great, but if you need another shot, you're out of luck. Though, while you and I might struggle with these weapons, we could always hire some help for the job. Unlike us, Vindicators don't have the same restrictions, meaning that on hard mode, these guys can do a whopping 19 points of damage. Folks, that's nine and a half hearts. Clearly, if you're looking for some extra extra muscle, these might just do the trick, and then some. But just make sure Johnny doesn't put you in his line of sight, all right? Number 17. Okay, hear me out. Pufferfish have a lot more going on than you think. Well, sure, most of us might only care about these things for the water breathing potions we brew. That's not the whole picture. Actually, that's about the only positive they offer up, because the rest of the time, they're a tool for evil. Don't believe me? Well, let's put that small hitbox to use, and I'll show you. By tucking a bunch of these poisonous pests underneath the trap door, we're fully 
capable of making a sneaky floor weapon. So if you want to keep some of those house guests from going out of line, then just throw a couple of these into the floor plan and the message will be clear. Number 18. I don't think any of us want to get on a bee's bad side. For one, they're just so adorable that you probably don't want to hurt one anyway, but that's not to mention that they can also carry quite a stinger. So to change their offensive capabilities to defensive, how about we make ourselves a bee army? With this swarm, all it takes is an enemy to be hit by one mistake and the damage will be done. And folks, if you can believe it, these things can even take down the wither. Now sure, you'll need a lot of them, and it would probably help to splash them with a strength 2 potion, but the point still stands that this buzzing battalion can wreck through anything you throw at them. And maybe next time, they'll want to stay on your good side. Number 19. Turtle eggs don't seem to do a lot. Like any baby, these things are quite the liability until they grow up, but that might just be our biggest asset. Since these eggs crack under the simplest bit of pressure, we can make an extremely easy trap. Just sneak one of these little guys under a thing of carpet, and then, as soon as any zombie or ne'er do well comes by, they'll be met with quite the surprise. One jump and that's it. And they'll start tumbling toward their doom, and you'll have one less hooligan to worry about. And now you don't have to worry about the egg or the fool. So if you got the silk touch on hand, this might just pave the way for the perfect possibility. Number 20. One of the key parts of speedrunning is a quick ender dragon fight. I mean, how are you going to reach the top of the leaderboard if you can't one cycle this foe? But while most of us think that beds are the fastest way to beat the baddie, there's actually a much stranger option. Leave it to the crazy minds of the Minecraft technical community to make up this monstrosity. The TNT Arrow Launcher, more affectionately referred to as the Rail Cannon. Being able to deal roughly 1200 points of damage in a single blow, this machine can one hit the Ender Dragon. And in fact, the only hope that anyone has of surviving this thing is a totem of undying. But if you can't cheat death, then this will take you to a swift one. And with that folks, blast that red sub button down below and have a good one, alright?